You know when things are such a big trend and a lot of people enjoy it? Some trends you get, some trends you don't, and some trends you wish it would just die and never come back. One of the trends was 2018's John Krasinski film, A Quiet Place, a film about a family in this post-apocalyptic world. If you make a single sound, these monsters will come and get you. I was hearing raving reviews when this film came out, but I never actually saw it. But I have recently just watched it, and since A Quiet Place Part 2 is coming out some time i thought i would give you guys my thoughts on a quiet place and i will be talking spoilers in this video you've been warned all right let's get into it so if you all the title of this video you probably know what did i think of a quiet place i loved it i loved every minute of this film i think this is one of the best maybe films ever and what this film does so well as we'll get into is be super simple it knows what it is it's not trying to be any more than what it actually is and i think that's what makes this film so engaging so let's talk first off the premise is easy possibly the best part of this film it's a great premise for a horror film if you make a single sound these monsters will come and get you first of all it makes for really intense sequences from beginning to end that anything could happen in any moment because most of the film is done without music or dialogue so the actors and john krasinski have to convey emotion through facial um facial um, movements and sign language to in, uh, show emotion, and I think that's one of the best parts. But the premise really builds tension so perfectly well. The tension that's being built through pretty much every single sequence from beginning to end, tension is being built. And this is one of the most intense filled films I've ever seen. seen. This film bi builds tension from beginning to end, and this film is perfect at building tension. And what makes the premise so interesting is not a typical premise. Yes, I know this film film is based on a book i haven't read the book so just between this film and it's even just a fantastic premise in a technical fanatic um point of view because this film from any director this would be a pretty interesting and scary task to take on there's not a lot of dialogue you have to use um a lot of things through emotion you have to direct your actors in a different way than normally you want to direct your actors so you have to direct them in a different and unique way than what you normally do i love that the cast of this film is absolutely fantastic john krasinski who directed this film and also stars in this film and also did the screenplay he's great as this film emily blunt is also extremely fantastic the birth bathtub sequence is one of the best sequences of the last decade and the child actors are surprisingly really great and this is john krasinski's director of debut and he directed this film fantastically the camera work the shots nothing of this film feels wasted every shot feels a purposeful no shot feels like it was wasted or like it needed to have a different moments it all feel perfectly um content with the sequence that it's trying to do and the performances here are scarily realistic and there's actually a great family dynamic the way they have to do certain things to be a family and i absolutely love that the opening sequence of this film where this young boy ends up dying and getting attacked by the creature the, um the older um um sister who's deaf in this film feels guilty because she gave him back the toy that john krasinski took gave took away and took the batteries out and she feels like she is responsible for this child's death and i absolutely love that character arc. and then at the very end she thinks her dad's mad at you and then eventually when john krasinski's character ends up dying it's a perfect arc of saying that he does love her and the character arc is completely um done with i absolutely love that about this film and this film actually feels like a realistic family it doesn't feel like a hollywoodized film that's the same thing about this entire film it doesn't feel hollywoodized it doesn't feel like hollywood put all their prints on it it feels real in the sense of this is a real situation it's a tense situation and it's trying to do its best job and its best opportunity to keep this situation moving to keep this situation operate i thought the cast did super interesting the visual effects of the creatures i think are real interesting it kind of was a mix of the demogorgon from certain things and a, a mix of venom and they are absolutely fantastic character and monster design perfectly the big eardrum when we go into it i think is great and the cgi for this film having a 14 million dollar budget which is a very small budget for at least a horror film was fantastic i thought the design was absolutely memorizing and the creatures themselves were have a really crazy and cr 
creepy design. What I love so much about this film is the dread that this film does. If you make a little sound, it, yeah, you can maybe outrun them. Not in a quiet place. You make a sound, you're mostly 100% dead in this film. And I absolutely love the tension from the opening sequence when the child dying. You instantly feel this tense, this scene of dread. There's not a lot of dialogue in this film. This film has a lot of emotion and sign language. And it's a very slower paced horror film for like I would say the first hour of the film. And a lot of... um moviegoers who just want to see some monster sequences, I think we'll find the first hour of the film boring and love the first last 30 minutes, which we'll get to in a second. But for people who want to see some monster sequences, but also really enjoy great character depth and character um, build-up and character um, evolution and just watching how this family is going to live through the situation... I think is going to be perfect, and I think people are going to absolutely love A Quiet Place for that, and people have loved A Quiet Place for that. This film is, as I said, builds tension and builds dread perfectly. This is a perfectly suspenseful film, and maybe the most suspenseful film I've ever seen, because from the opening shot when they're in this store, and, and you just see this quiet, somber, and you're on like day 87 or something, and you just see how these family is going to live and how this family adapts. And, oh, another thing I love so much about this film is the new ways this family has to live. Instead of using a plate, they would maybe use a leaf. To play with a board game, they would use like paper objects instead of metal. I love the way they used um, situations to survive. They um, used their farm in different and creative ways, put lights to make it feel different. And if you're under attack and use in different sequences, I absolutely love that. And this film actually has takes risk. The opening sequence opens, as I've said, with a child dying. I feel like I'm sh shocked that Hollywood let that happen. And that's why I say this doesn't feel like a Hollywoodized film. Because, to be honest, I don't know how John Krasinski got by with in the opening sequence. A child is just going to get straight up murdered by this creature. I don't really know how it's going to happen. And what's so great about this film, especially, is that opening sequence. In the sword, the direction, the tension, the character developing and also what's super great about this film is it's super simple it doesn't try to overstay its welcome it doesn't try to over um do anything it's a simpleized film from start to finish there's the beginning middle and then in the last 30 minutes if you just want to see some creature and intense sequences the last 30 minutes are for you the last 30 minutes were gripping intense and overall pretty fantastic but i found me to be more interested in the characters and the family dynamic than in the monster sequences because the monster sequences why extremely intense and engaging and really exciting the human stuff in the more family dynamic is really interesting john krasinski said this in a video um um kind of analyzing this film this isn't a monster horror film it is in a certain way but this is a family film and I think that's the best way to describe this film. This whole movie is about family. It is not a horror movie. I mean, it is a horror movie, but to me, the theme of family and what would you really do for your kids is the reason why I did the movie. So there is horror elements, but there's not, um, it's not a horror film. It's a character study. It's a family dynamic. And the character arcs I've already talked about is brilliant. I want to talk about the character arcs briefly is the oldest daughter who's deaf, I think, the performance is great, by the way, but the character arc is absolutely fantastic after her the death of her little brother, feeling that she's super guilty and feeling like her father doesn't really love her anymore. Before he ends up dying, he's saying, I love her, then just, it's absolutely impactful and just amazing of what this film does. The music is also extremely intense. It's classic horror movie music, but I really enjoyed it, and it's so simple. It doesn't overstate its welcome. It's simple premise, and it doesn't overdo it. That's what I'm kind of worried the sequel will do. It looks bigger, and it looks more grander, which could be really good for a sequel, but I'm hoping it doesn't overstay. It doesn't try to do anything that this film can not do. The ending I found to be extremely emotional, um, engaging, and this film is just different. It's a different type of horror film that I've ever seen. It builds tension perfectly. It's funny in some ways. The family dynamic is perfect. It's engaging. It's emotional. And the actual elements that this film has, you could uh, pick this film apart from start to finish. Why do they not have electricity? How are they getting this stuff? If they have a generator, one of them make a lot of noise. How does the monsters detract noise? Because waterfalls make noise, but they can talk through. You can nitpick the heck out of this film. 
But that's not the point. The point is a super simple film about a family trying to deal with this film. Also, I feel like this film is really interesting for being made in the mints of this apocalypse. If this film would have started with day one, this would have been a totally different film. But since this day, the film starts with day, like, 81, and it goes into, like, day 473 or something. Because you're just in the middle of this attack, and you're just, just these characters in this family trying to survive... I think it's perfect. If this film was in day one, I think this would have been a totally different film. And the ending with the shotgun shell and just getting ready for what's going to happen and the sequel is absolutely fantastic. There's some great horror sequences, like there's um, the, the young boy going through the cornfields and the creatures chasing him. Fantastic. The bathtub sequence is amazing. The intensity, the shots, just seeing... Um, the actor and in the background seeing the creature going up the stairs i think that's intense it's riveting it's absolutely fantastic so overall a quiet place is amazing i love this film it's a perfect thriller it does the film justice it's intense it's engaging and i absolutely love it you can nitpick this film to death but i absolutely love it i'm gonna give the quiet place an a so those are my thoughts on a quiet place and i cannot wait for a quiet place part two coming out april of next year curse you coronavirus curse you indeed if you guys enjoy this video you guys can hit the like button and subscribe and then the push notification bell so you guys never miss when i upload another video and i'll let you know your guys thoughts on quiet place do you love it do you hate it do you think it's overrated do you think it's underrated i'll let you know my thoughts you guys can check out my podcast that you every other tuesday with a friend of mine it's called the movie view podcast and you guys can also check out my instagram at general daniel 77 thanks for watching guys and i'll see you guys next time general out